and everyone, Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy, and we are going to be testing this uh, 96 scale US Ohio class RC submarine put out by Submarine Works. Uh, it's been a long build. You, some of you guys have been following my progress uh, for the blog on my channel here. Thank you for that. Um, Jules and I are going to be heading out to the pond. We're going to throw this thing in there for her maiden voyage. Uh, it's been trimmed out in theory. It should be working really well. So uh, without any further delay, let's head out to the pond, uh, toss it in there and see how it does. All right, as we get the boat in the water, let's talk a little bit about my impressions of the boat's performance. Now, in typical nuclear boat fashion or modern submarine fashion, performance is really dependent upon forward momentum of the model through the water. So when you operate one of these modern submarines, you'll find that response to the controls is very, very limited, if not non-existent, until you get some forward velocity and have some water traveling over the control surfaces of the boat. So in that fashion, this particular model is no exception. It uh, does not turn on a dime. Obviously, it's a very long model. Um, I'm gonna guess that the turning diameter uh, of the model is probably somewhere in the vicinity of 20 to 25 feet. So operation obviously requires a larger pond or swimming pool uh, in order to have a fun experience operating it. Um, the dive control is exceptionally precise in typical OTW dive module fashion. Uh, that pump allows exceptionally precise control of the ballast system. The maintaining periscope depth was exceptionally easy. Um, I managed to do that uh, fairly well one-handed uh, while trying to film with the other hand. It's a very, very uh, sedate boat. Uh, obviously that size lends to stability. Uh, very easy to drive and maintain at periscope depth. All in all, exceptionally impressed with the model. It gets up and gets going really, really well uh, under power. Um, big prop, big motor, um, adds up for some really impressive turns of speed. So again, all in all, I really like this boat. It's got a real presence on and under the water. It was a joy to drive very stable, big turning radius, but again, super common for a boat of this configuration. So now that you've seen the boat in operation, I'm gonna get into some of the nitty gritty details about how the boat was put together. If you've been following my build blog, you'll have seen a lot of this before, but if you wanna skip all that and just see how it's all set up, now's your chance to see it. So part of the design um, strategy when we started building this boat was to make sure that it fit conveniently in a travel case. And you can see that behind me right here. Uh, this is like a Pelican style case. Uh, it's airtight, it's waterproof, exceptionally durable, and it makes the model easy to transport. You've got handles, you can carry it like a suitcase. You've also got handles on the end here so that you can uh, wheel it behind you to and from the pond. So it's gonna make it exceptionally easy to transport and store. So let's crack into the case. We'll take a look at what you're looking at as soon as you open things up. We'll get everything put together and you'll see how it all works. All right, there wasn't room in the case for the radio, so that will be carried separately, but that's certainly not a big problem at all. We've got six latches on the case and it opens up just like this and here is the model uh, in its entirety ready for assembly so we've got the kind of assembled lower hull with the cylinder locked in place that's not going to move during transport, all our linkages are set up. We don't need to worry about anything like that. We've got the missile deck nestled nicely in the middle. 
upper deck here with the battery already installed on it. The sail is nestled in the middle here, periscope uh, in a slot, and then the upper rear deck is in a section back there. So I'm gonna pull these out one section at a time. Uh, again, very carefully with the lower hull. We're gonna put this over on the stand over here. And we're gonna pull the top deck out like this. Here is the sail assembly with the linkage for the dive planes, the periscope, and our upper deck. And last but not least, our missile deck. All right, the first thing that I'm gonna do is attach the sail to the missile deck. And you gotta put this waterproof LED light connector through this hole, and it's a little bit of a tight fit because that sail uh, is so narrow, but if you just give it a little squeeze and push it through, it goes through nice and easily. Linkage goes on the inside there. And then what we're gonna do is just line up the holes in the sail. We've got two stainless steel bolts that screw right in there. And then we're going to tighten them down with our screwdriver and our sail is going to be attached. Now that the sail is attached, we can put our periscope in and this is friction fit. We got two pegs in there. They just line up, press fit down and our periscope is installed, ready to go. All right, the next step for assembly is to put our upper hull onto our lower hull. And you're going to start at the front here, make sure you don't trap any of those cables. Slip the top over the lip of the bottom. Grab the model, grab right here and just press back until it locks in place magnetically in the back of the boat. So the lip in the front is trapping the front, the pin in the back is trapping the back and you can basically lift the entire model um, up safely without having to undo any bolts or screws or clasps. Now we're going to install the rear hull, upper hull, that just slips in the back, drops down, just like that. Single stainless steel bolt, tightens down. You can give it a little twist with a screwdriver to make sure that it's tight. And the rear section is now installed. All right, we've got a couple of connections in the front here, but before we get into those, I just want to show you how easy it is to remove the uh, battery compartment. So you just give it a little twist and it comes right out. So this is a lithium polymer battery with some 3D printed magnetic mounts, waterproof connector. So to install it, you basically just put it in at an angle, drop it into place and it will line up and snap down. That is locked into place right now. Connector for the watertight cylinder it simply gets connected like this. And then we've got a magnetic linkage for the front dive planes and that just clicks right in place just like that. We'll take a closer look at that front section, battery compartment, waterproof connector, magnetic linkage for the fair water planes. All right, we're gonna install our missile deck now and that's a fairly straightforward process as well. I'm just gonna set this in place here. I'm gonna grab the lighting connector and this is a waterproof uh, two pin connector. This presses into place, screws together and now we have a waterproof connection for our LED lights. I'm gonna tuck my cables out of the way. There's a brass pin in the front goes in place. You can see that the linkage for our Fairwater planes have already magnetically aligned, snapped in place, drop it down, and that is it. We've got two really powerful magnets in the back holding that deck in place. 
everything is now together, ready to go. The really cool thing about this model is that in order to turn it on and off, you do not need to crack into it, flip a switch, or swipe a magnet. It's all done remotely via this key fob, so when you're ready, turn the transmitter on, simply push the on button, you can see the LED lights have lit up, the model is now ready to go. Okay, since we've got the boat on the bench, let's check the main functions of Fairwater Plains. Dive, rise, check out our rudder, starboard port, and our throttle, forward, and reverse. And just note how smooth that is. That's a, that's a real definition of a smooth, well-engineered drive line is how slowly you can spin the prop and with the minimum amount of vibration. And since the boat is here right now, I want to show you the automatic pitch control. As the boat dives, the rear planes lift to force the back down. And if it goes out of pitch the other way, they move to correct it. So you can see them moving to correct the boat's pitch automatically as it's in operation. All right, I'm gonna go into a little bit about the cylinder in the boat, installation, removal, and uh, hints and tricks for this OTW dive module. Um, installation and removal is exceptionally easy. We have magnetic linkages on the back and a dog bone, which means there's no physical connections back there that you need to worry about prying apart. Um, in the front, there is a simple bracket that slides in place. I use a, a slot-headed screwdriver. Um, just nestle it in between the cylinder and that bulkhead and you just give it a little pry forward and it'll slip free of its mounting um, bracket and you can pull it right out like this. And that frees up the front of the model. And then to remove it, you simply slide it forward Magnetic linkages disengage, grab it carefully, and lift it free. See a little bit of water left in there from the operation uh, of the boat, but after being in the water, not a drop of water in these cylinders. It's a beautifully engineered piece of engineering. Installation of the cylinder is simply the reversal of the procedure. You drop it in place, it nestles in the cradles nicely, slip it backwards, making sure that your dog bone lines up, press it, everything locks in place, drop the bulkhead in the front, line it up with the holes, and that's it. Here's a little bit of a closer look at that front bulkhead in case you wanted to see how that was done. Again, it slips in place in these channels. You just pop it forward, comes free, the entire cylinder slips forward and free. And again, just the reverse situation to get it put into place. Just like that. All right, let's take a couple of minutes and talk about the uh, brains and brawn of these remote controlled submarines. In this particular boat, we're utilizing a three and a half inch diameter OTW dive module. Now these are certainly not the cheapest cylinders on the market, but they are, in my opinion, one of, if not the best in the market. Um, this particular cylinder just for the base unit uh, is gonna run about $1,300. So the maintenance of this is exceptionally important to make sure that you keep your investment alive. We have a forward compartment that houses all of the pump system, the main ballast system, uh, and it also houses the remote on and off switch. Um, if we take a look at the back section, this is more of the propulsion and control system. We've got the main drive motor. We've got two full-sized servos and uh, the speed controller. For the most part, these are very maintenance-free. After every operation at the pond, you're gonna want to remove these brass thumb screws. 
open up the cylinder and make sure that you air it out just in case a drop managed to get inside. You don't want any corrosion to occur inside the cylinder. It's also very important to make sure that you do so so that you remain familiar with the uh, installation and removal of the bulkheads and you examine the o-ring seals for any damage or uh, contaminants that may affect the seal. Other than that, really there is not a lot of maintenance revolved for the cylinder. You can remove the uh, end cap off of the seal and apply silicone grease from time to time, uh, but these are rubber bellows seals. They require no maintenance uh, at all. So um, other than that, just make sure that you examine the cylinder, vent it out after each operation, uh, and obviously bench test it before and after every time out on the pond, and you should get years and years, if not decades, uh, of fun and enjoyment out of your cylinder. There you go, everyone. This is Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy. Happy to say that this is wrapping up the build of this 196 scale Submarine Works Ohio class remote controlled submarine. I hope you enjoyed the process. I certainly did in building it. By all means, uh, if you have any questions, comments, Please reach out to me at any time, bob at rc-sub.com. Visit my website, nautilusdrydocks.com for lots of cool information, resources, kits, components, and other cool stuff for this amazing hobby. I'm gonna grab this boat. We're gonna ship it out to the new owner. Thanks for joining me, everyone. We'll catch you next time.